All right, today we're going to take a look at finding real solutions to polynomial equations. Notice I called this part one, meaning I'm going to throw some more examples at you later, but um, for this first um, little slideshow thing, I just have two. So my first one looks like x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 6. Um, we're expecting four solutions because it's a power of four equation, but let's start by talking about, well, do we expect to get positives or negatives? So to do that, we can look at Descartes' rule of signs and just notice how many sign changes do we see right here. So let me poke up my pen so we can note out. This goes positive, negative, there's a sign change. That's the same, but this negative to positive, there's a sign change, and positive to negative, there's another one. So I can see I have three um, sign changes here, which means I have either three or one positive solutions. Remember, we're always going to drop down by 2 using Descartes' rule of signs. All right, so let's talk about negative solutions, which means I need to plug in negative x. When I do that, I did put parentheses in so that I just don't get confused with my signs at all. And you can see, after I expand that, I have x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus x squared minus 9x minus 6. So I go positive, positive, negative. There's a sign change, but then I say negative, negative. Um, so here I only have one negative sign change, which means I only have one negative solution. All right, so let's use that and keep pushing a little farther, and let's go on to the rational root um, theorem, which says we should look at the last term, my 6, and list all of the possible factors, and then let's look at our first term and list all of those factors. So my last term was 6, so I have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. Um, the Q just being 1 means I only have plus or minus 1. Again, that's our first example. We want to keep it nice. Um, putting those together, I have P over Q, my possible rationals, as plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. All right. We need to take those numbers, and there's eight of them, and plug them into the function, looking for which ones give it a zero. So you have choices. You can do it by hand, um, or you can grab the calculator, which is my choice. That's how I like to do it. So know that you're going to the y equals, and you're going to plug in the function just as we had it. Um, and then we're going to flip over to the table. So everything, oops, I want to use this y button first to enter it, and then I want to go second graph, which brings me to table to look at what I get. Um, and you can see that I have mine set up where I can just plug the values in. If you have any problems with that, uh, make sure you know how to switch your table over to ask um, for the independent, and then you want it to say, um, it, you want it to give you the solution for the dependent. Um, so I put in those numbers, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 6, negative 6, and the ones I want to point out are right here. Here's a 0, and this one also is 0, which says 1 and 2 are solutions. So that's awesome. We have two of them. We need to find the other two. Um, to do that, let's use synthetic division. And with synthetic, I want to take a number that I know, and we happen to know 1. So let's put 1 in, um, and I really wanted to switch colors there. It didn't pick up for me. There we go. And let's put in the coefficient. So I had 1x to the fourth minus 3x cubed um, minus 1x squared plus 9x and then minus 6. Okay, so those are the coefficients to all of my equation. So first term always drops down, so I still have 1. I do 1 times 1 is 1. Then I add. Negative 3 and 1 is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So I add that and I get negative 3. 1 times negative 3, negative 3. 9 minus 3 is 6. And then 1 times 6 is 6. 6 and negative 6 is 0. Okay. I always expect this 0 at the end. That tells me that um, x minus 1 is a factor. Our other factor we know is 2. So let's do this again. And here's my point. This was x to the fourth. When I did a division, this is x cubed. When I get through with this division, I'll be at x squared, and we know how to do everything with x squared. Okay. So here I am dropping this one down. 2 times 1 is 2. Um, negative 2 and 2 gives me 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 3 and 0 is negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 6 and negative 6 is 0, and we stop. All right, so all of this mess, what does this mean? This 1 says I have x squared. Um, this is plus 0x. I'm not going to draw it. And then minus 3. Okay, 
So given that I have that, I have x squared minus 3 equals 0. Um, we can just pull this 3 over. So now I have x squared equals 3, which tells me x is plus or minus, because remember, when I take the square root, it's going to give me two answers every time, plus or minus 3. So check that out with what we had before. Before we knew x was equal to 1, x was equal to 2, and now we have x is plus or minus 3. If you go back to our rational root theorem and you go back to our Descartes rule of sign, we knew that we were going to have either 3 or 1 positives. I have 1, 2, and this positive square root of 3. I have 3 positive, I have this 1 negative, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions to my equation. All right, so now that we kind of have a gist of it, let's do another one. Um, so here's our second example. I have 2x to the fourth plus 13x cubed plus 28x squared plus 22x plus 5. So once again, let's start with Descartes, and let's look at the positive solutions. So I want you to ask yourself, how many sign changes do I see here? And if you look at it for a minute, I hope you see that there are no sign changes. All right, so no sign changes means that I don't have any positive solutions. That will help us when we get to rational root, because I'm not going to put any positives into the calculator or plug them in by hand into the function. Um, how many negatives do we have? Well, let's plug negative um, x in. Again, everywhere, you see, once again, I use parentheses because I like to kind of keep track of those negatives. So I have 2x to the fourth, um, now minus 13x cubed, plus 28x squared, minus 22x plus 5. Let's change our color here so we can see it. So I went positive to negative, I went negative to positive, I went positive to negative, and I went negative to positive. Here's one, two, three, four, four sign changes for plugging in negative x. All right, what does that mean? It means we could have four, right? We could have four negative solutions, but we might just have two, or we might have none, right? Um, so here there's supposed to be a... Zero. Sorry about that. Didn't put that in there. So we have four, two, or zero negative solutions. So let's go on to our rational root theorem to see if we can find some of those solutions. Just like before, we're looking at the last term, five. This time, I know I'm going only, only going to have negative solutions, so I'm going to write my five and my one, and we'll talk about when we get to p over q. Why did I write plus or minus? Um, from the first coefficient, my 2, I have the 1 and the 2. The reason I didn't write minus 1, minus 5, minus 1, minus 2 is because if I do negative 1 over negative 1, it becomes positive, and I just think that's confusing. So it's when I do my p over q that I'm just going to throw only negatives in. So I have um, 1 and 5, so I have negative 1, negative 5. I also have um, 1 over 2 is negative 1 half, and then 5 over 2, oh, look at this. Don't, don't do what I wrote. This is negative 5 halves. Sometimes I start um, typing and it comes out weird. So ignore that little 1 fifth I wrote. That was crazy. Um, it should be negative 5 halves. So I have 1 over 1, 5 over 1, 1 over 2, 5 over 2. That's what I should have. Okay, so again, now that I have these four possibilities, let's go back to the calculator and see what that does when I plug them in. Step one is always you got to tell the calculator what you want. So I want to give it my original function, 2x to the fourth plus 13x cubed plus 28x squared plus 22x plus 5. After I get it in, again, go back to the table, and you can see here I put them in, negative 1, negative 2. It converts it to decimal, so I put in negative 1 half, it put in 0. 0.5, that's fine. I put in negative 5 halves, it put in negative 2.5. Um, what's important is that I see that here's a 0, here's a 0. Um, so this negative 2 and negative 2.5 are solutions to my function. Okay, let's try again to switch back to a color we can see. All right, so just like before, once I know what my solutions are, I want to do synthetic division. So let's use the negative 1 because I think it's easier than the negative 2.5. Um, We're going to have to come back to it, but I want to do things in an easy manner. So I'm going to put down my coefficients of 2, 13, 28, um, 22, and 5. Okay. Order doesn't matter when you do the synthetic. If I pick the negative 1 or the negative 2.5, I just do whatever seems simpler. All right, so I'm going to start with this 2 that's going to drop down. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So I'm going to add that to 13, which gives me 11. Negative 1 times 11 sorry, is negative 11. I add that to 28, and I get 17. 
Negative 1 times 17 is negative 17. When I add that to 22, I get positive 5. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5, which gives me 0, which is what we wanted. So I went from power 4 to power 3. All right, we're going to do that again. I'm going to put negative 2.5. If you prefer to put 5 halves in, that's absolutely fine. You also all have calculators you can use. All right, so the first one is the 2 drops down. Negative 2.5 times 2 is negative 5. Um, 11 and negative 5 gives me positive 6. All right, so we keep going. I go 6 times 2.5, actually negative 2.5, and it gives me um, negative 15. 17 minus 15 gives me 2. Negative 2.5 times 2 is negative 5, and not surprising, I got 0. That's what we're supposed to get. Oh, it's a really bad 0. Okay, what does that mean? x to the fourth went down to x cubed, went down to x squared. And this is a 2, not a z. It's just my pen. All right, so this says now I have 2x squared plus 6x plus 2. So this is what I want to work on. I want to work on what are the solutions to that. Okay. So let's go over here and write it. 2x squared plus 6x plus 2. Okay. Um, what I notice is 2, 6, and 2 are all even. So why don't we factor out a 2 to make this a little easier on ourselves. I get x squared, 3x, and 1. Um, you should notice this is not factorable. There aren't any factors of 1 that add up to 3. That's just not possible. So that says we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, which says x is equal to negative b, so that's negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So this is 3 squared minus 4. Um, my a in this case, I'm using this part, so I'm not using this 2. I'm using here. This is 1. So 4a, c is also 1, all over 2a, which a is 1. All right, let's simplify. This is negative 3, plus or minus the square root. Um, 3 squared is 9. This 4, 1, and 1, that just becomes 4. So 9 minus 4 is 5 over 2. Okay. Again, let's remind us what we knew. We knew x was negative 1, x was also negative um, 2.5 or 5 halves, whatever you like. So I have 1, 2, um, look here, this negative 3 plus the square root of 5, if you were to add negative 3 plus the square root of 5, it is still negative, and then divide by 2 is still negative. Negative 3 minus the square root of 5, also negative. So you can see these are negative, these are negative, there are four negative solutions to this equation. Um, if I were going to write this kind of like in factors form that um, I would find useful, um, if we wanted to, um, what I would do is I would write f of x. That's an f, hard to believe, right, for my writing. Um, I would have x minus or x, x plus 1 um, from this x equals negative 1. I would have x plus 2.5. Um, and then I would keep that 2 from up here, and I would keep the x squared plus 3x plus 1. Okay. Um, it also, you could throw this 2 in here um, to make this have no 2. I could put it here and have 2x plus 5. That would be okay, too. All right, so that's the end of our first little slideshow on factoring um, polynomials, finding real solutions. Um, stay tuned. I'll have another one soon.